What is going on folks? Welcome back to the channel, Justin here. Being stuck with no power during a brutal heat wave is obviously not a good position to be in. Unfortunately, that's the exact situation millions on the West Coast are facing as we speak. Over the last few days, California has been on the brink of rolling blackouts in order to combat the record-breaking power consumption by its residents. Temperatures have already reached 116 degrees just on Tuesday, and the heat wave is forecasted to last through Friday. Now, there's not much you or I can do about the weather. Mother Nature's always going to win when it comes down to it. If we can't control the weather, the next best thing is to prepare for it. Let's look at 10 ways you can be better prepared and survive a record-breaking heat wave that has brought down the power grid. If you like the video, please smack that like button like you mean it and consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this in the future. It's a massive help with the infamous YouTube algorithm. You get it. Let's jump in. Number one, stay hydrated. Now, I feel I shouldn't even have to mention this honestly, but it's the most important. According to the Mayo Clinic, women need about 2.7 liters of water a day and men need about 3.7. About 20% of that fluid intake can come from your food and the rest of it from water or beverage intake. Well, if it's over 110 degrees out with no air conditioning, you can bet that you're gonna need a lot more than that. As I'm sure it is with you, when I'm outside working hard, I'm sweating, it's a hot day, it's hard to gauge if I'm drinking enough. Well, if you're never getting to the point where you're actually feeling thirsty and your urine is clear or has a light yellow tinge, you're probably drinking enough water. It can be hard to remember to drink when you're outside for a long period of time though, right? You're doing garden whatever it is. So just make sure that you're constantly drinking water. You've got something next to you. It can help remind you to constantly be drinking. Now, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have water stored on hand in a situation like this. If you happen to be on a well like I am, you need water stored. Now, really, in any emergency situation, you really can't trust the water coming into your faucet. For example, it's city water. On a well, I've got a little more trust in it. I would still want to make sure I have water on hand. In a survival situation, the rule of thumb is to set aside a bare minimum, a gallon per person per day. So a gallon of water per person per day. So in a situation like a heat wave that may last a week for a family of four, that's four people times seven days times one gallon. So that's 28 gallons of water for seven days for your family of four. I would recommend in a situation like this, or really any situation, to double that and actually have two gallons per person per day. If you've got severe your heat and like in this situation it's going to tax your body more requiring you to drink more even at rest unless you plan on laying down all day in the basement and night and not exerting yourself whatsoever go with the higher amount you can store water in any type of container you want just make sure it's food grade so you know you're not ingesting chemicals or residues I'll put links to a couple of my favorite water storage containers in the description below but I'm not going to be prescriptive here you could stick with one gallon water jugs or go bigger and use the common seven gallon stackables if you wanted to totally up to you. Remember, if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Stay ahead of dehydration and be constantly drinking. Number two, stay wet. Staying cool by staying wet is a fail-proof method. Assuming you have water, you can spray yourself with a mister or keep a bandana or a towel soaked around your neck or other body parts to keep your body cool. I mean, heck, if you're lucky, you have a swimming pool, you could actually just make some fun out of the situation. Now, this is another critical reason to have some extra water on hand, even just to cover you for a few days. Obviously, prioritize any water Water for drinking first, but if you have enough, this method could be a solid backup. Number three, shade yourself. From wearing a wide-brimmed hat to keeping loose-fitting clothes like cotton clothes at the ready, make sure you have multiple ways to stay shaded when outside. You might even want to focus on clothes that have moisture wicking properties or even sun or UV protection. Cotton is a solid choice in hot weather as it's lightweight, it's breathable, and it happens to be on the cheaper side too. Number four, shade your home. One of the best ways to naturally cool your home is to leverage tree shade. This is obviously one of those things that you wanna plan ahead of time because obviously you're not gonna grow a tree overnight. But planting the right trees and locations around your home could produce shade throughout the day that could make a huge difference in the event that you lost power during hotter months. It could also make a huge difference on your energy bill. If you have a smaller home, maybe you could fix a tarp or some other means of even partially blocking the sun from your home. Be creative, anything could help in this situation. Number five, heat blocking curtains. Where I live now has the back of the house facing the south side, which means most of the heat during the day comes through that wall and the windows because the sun beats on it all day long. One of the best investments I made after I moved in was getting heat blocking curtains for every single window facing the south side. It really does make a huge difference. You don't have to spend a lot of money on something like this, simply blocking the sun from getting into your home and heating up your house from the inside 
will leave you in a better position overall. Cutting up cardboard boxes and securing them with tape against your window is just one low cost example to keep the sun out. Close off rooms with outside facing walls. Another thing you can do is close off as many rooms as you can that have outside walls. This will help to keep that heat, especially with the walls facing the sun, from finding its way into your inner portion of the house. This is just one more thing that could help. Remember to avoid that south facing wall if you're in the northern hemisphere and the north facing walls if you're in the southern hemisphere. That's where the sun will be bearing down on you the most. Chances are if you have an older home or just old leaky windows, there is plenty of air transfer occurring between the inside of your home and the outside. Ensure that your windows are properly sealed and you don't have gaps or cracks of insulation in your walls. It will help immensely. It's just another thing that could help on your energy bill. And I mean, look at inflation lately. We could all use a break on our energy bills. Number seven, don't cook inside. Another one of those things that people just might not think about. Do everything you can to keep from cooking indoors. For those that have a gas stove top or an oven, it might be tempting to manually light your stove to cook your next meal. All that heat from cooking will just raise the temperature in your home. This is the time to pull out that grill and cook outside in the shade. Assuming you've lost power in the situation, you won't be using your pressure cooker or other appliances that require electricity to cook. Even if you have a gas or electric generator, avoid the temptation to use it for appliances indoors. Number eight, fans. Whether you have battery operated fans like this DeWalt fan I use around the house, or you have a gas powered or a solar powered generator, fans are a game changer. You're probably not going to be able to hook up the ones on the ceiling, so make sure you have a portable one. Now you may already know this, but fans don't actually cool the room. For example, it does nothing to turn on your fan with you not in the room. The fan cools you via the wind chill effect. The air movement caused by the fan allows your skin to evaporate sweat easier, ultimately cooling you off. Just make sure the fan blades are actually pushing the air down on you, and it's not reversed where the fan is actually pulling the air upwards. The latter is ideal for winter months where you want the heat to be pulled upward and down the sides of the walls for easier distribution of heat. Number nine, stay low. Spend as much time in the lowest levels of your dwelling as possible. If you have a basement, you could rely on the earth to keep you considerably cooler in a situation like this. With the average basement temperature sitting in the 50s and 60s, you're gonna be pretty cool compared to being upstairs. If you don't have a basement, just remember to stay on the lower levels as the heat will collect on the upper levels. The same goes for sleeping. You'll be best off moving the beds downstairs in this situation if you wanna stay cooler. Number 10, another trick you can take advantage of is as the temperatures tend to drop at night, you will likely have the golden opportunity to open up all the windows and maybe doors if you have screens to allow a cross breeze. You'll at least fill the house with some fresh and hopefully cooler air. Just remember to shut them before it starts to heat up again in the morning and you'll be set. What other methods do you know to keep cool in a situation like this? Staying cool in hot conditions like this is just as important as staying warm in freezing temperatures. Let me know in the comments. At the time of making this video, California residents have mostly avoided rolling blackouts thanks to what seems to be residents reducing overall usage, despite still reaching record energy consumption. Just be sure you're ready in a situation like this. You don't wanna rely on your neighbors to be turning down their air conditioner so that you don't have a blackout. More important than anything is that you have water set aside for your family in any situation. Don't be left without the single most important substance that your body needs to survive. All right, folks, until next time, stay practical.